We're going to do a small animation on Man Candy's legs to show how um, using these little little bendy ball controls in the middle here can add some life into IK animation of the legs, especially when combined with uh, the stretchiness um, of those legs. Um, so this isn't really a complete animation, it's maybe like a short 18 frame example that is mainly focusing on Man Candy's legs and not on his entire body. So before we start, let's make sure that we have the record button pressed here and we'll go ahead and we'll start animating Man Candy. So I'm going to rotate his his um his his body a little bit using his main body controller here just so that we can have a, a slight like three-quarter view of his legs so we can see the bend in them a little bit as we go and I'll call this bendy legs and I really don't care too much about the upper body I'm going to just um, put his arms a little bit out of the way here um, so we can have a view of his legs as we work. I'm actually not going to animate his upper body at all. So I'm just going to get these out of the way. Um, once again, so I was going to, there we go, select the hand. And By the way, you can also hit control and draw a little lasso around multiple bones. And I like doing that for the fingers a lot since I can just sort of quickly position them all without thinking about it. Do the same thing with this arm. Lower his shoulders a little bit. As I said, it's not really important what, what I'm doing with the arms here because I'm simply getting them out of the way of the legs so we can see what's going on as we as we animate the legs. So I can always change the viewport, make sure that nothing is really stupid. And just put this a little bit up. And maybe hunch the body a little bit forward. It's hard to resist doing stuff like this sometimes when you get in the mood. So let's have have him like that, basically. And since I'm going to focus on the leg animation, I'm going to work just in layer two of the armature here, so we don't have to see any of the rest of his bones sort of confusing us. And let's just just key the legs in this position without moving them. So we just select the two feet and do I lock rot and key the torso just by moving it a bit maybe move this a little bit there we go so uh, this animation is going to be remarkably limited actually so I said I'd do about an 18 frame animation and all I'm going to do for my final pose is I'm going to grab his torso and going to move it directly up like so And maybe up here and sort of on the way here before he goes up maybe in the fifth frame I'll have him go down for an anticipation and right before he reaches the peak or at the end rather I'll have him actually just be a little bit higher here maybe on this frame to have a little bit of a accent on that. So if you play it back, okay, that looks reasonable, right? If I didn't have these two poses, it would look like that, which really doesn't look that good. But um, I'll just undo that. And that looks much better, actually. So having a few, having anticipation and having accents on your motion, so you can have anticipation and overshoot, basically, um, can really help your actions look a lot less computery and a lot nicer. And um, normally, 
that kind of thing you can do when you're planning out your animation in the thumbnailing phase or you can add that in after you've animated the basic keyframes and key poses and then go through and sort of tweak that way. Um, in this case I'm just kind of working in this way. I have a kind of an organic way of working so I don't always plan things out too meticulously but I just kind of want to get the torso doing sort of the right thing here because we're going to focus on using the legs to tweak how this looks. So this looks okay um, ignoring the fact that his upper body is not being animated at all and his feet are staying glued to the ground but what we kind of try to use is to use these little uh, stretchy and bendy bones here to kind of accentuate this motion. So one thing that would be kind of cool is if as he's going up these two balls uh, that, that his, basically his knees don't catch up with his body quite as quickly. So the motion is being pulled from the torso and is not quite transferring down to the knees at speed. And after he reaches this peak position and he's going his torso is actually going down. Uh oh. Somehow I so the idea is the torso should be higher in this oh my mouse is acting up a little bit. Okay, so now we have that. Let's play it back again. Yeah, so as his torso is going down a little bit, then we'll shoot the knees up a little bit too much. And then maybe a frame after this, recover them here. So now let's play that back. And you notice there's a little soft bounce to that the knees and it's kind of making this a little bit more lively. We can make this even more lively by actually having the legs bend here in this top position. So we'll move these back breaking the joints the wrong way like so and and um, now we have to smooth that out so it's not such an ugly pose by changing his legs into little bowed arcs here. So we'll move these back. And we don't want it to be arced all the time. So here we'll just clear those. I lock and and we'll clear them at the recovery pose as well. You can also visually just kind of move them if you want. And let's have a look how that plays back. And there you have it. And we can play around with delaying these a little bit too if you want. So we can grab these frames here. Delay them one frame. Maybe delay these another frame. That's too much. Oh, I kind of like it the way it was before actually. So we'll leave it that way. Yeah. So now we have a little bit more of a gooey feeling to his legs as they're getting stretched out of shape. And that's basically all we did.